Kaboom! It's chilly in here. Did you know U.S. researchers once devised a scenario to cool the planet with explosives? In 1992, researchers at the National Academy of Science published geoengineering options that included artillery shells containing UV reflective alumina and 16-inch naval rifles. The Academy's Committee on Science, Engineering and Public Policy drafted this, and it involves tons of firepower. Specifically, the plan would have seen these massive one-ton shells half-filled with alumina and half-filled with dispersal mechanisms and other materials. The cost? An estimated 10,000 U.S. dollars per round. And there's lots of rounds. The plan would see 40 10-barrel stations located on empty land areas or at sea due to noise, firing five shots per hour for 24 hours a day for 250 days of the year. In other words, 400 barrels lobbying 48,000 artillery shells per day for 250 days of the year. The scenario envisages the naval rifle firing a projectile containing alumina into the stratosphere. Once there, it would disperse the substance. Alumina, like sulfur dioxide, can also reflect ultraviolet light. And how long was this for? 40 freaking years. That's because, according to the 1992 plan, the estimated stratospheric dust lifetime is two years. The whole aim of the 40-year scenario was to continually eliminate 1 trillion tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, but the estimated annual cost was 100 billion U.S. dollars. And that's 1992 money. Here's some more cool military tech. The Air Force is working on a new toy. This may or may not be a game changer. The U.S. Air Force is developing a new non-lethal cruise missile, which officials say could knock out North Korean missiles. It's called the CHAMP, which stands for Counter Electronics High Power Microwave Advanced Missile Project. The CHAMP system is a high-powered microwave weapon that can be delivered on an air-launched cruise missile from an American bomber. The CHAMP missiles are designed to fly at low altitudes into enemy airspace and send out strong electromagnetic impulses in order to jam enemy control and command systems. Cruise missiles fired by the enemy would then splash down in the ocean. The system is still in the development phase and also has drawbacks. Although non-lethal, the missile looks similar to the nuclear-capable variant and could be mistaken as an act of war if spotted by other countries. Another obstacle for the CHAMP system is that military equipment often has redundant wiring and insulation to protect from electronic attacks. So is this a game-changer? Probably not. South Korea's 10-person military submersible. The South Korean Navy has a submersible that also doubles as a surface vessel. According to Korean naval manufacturer Vogo, the SDV-1000W can be deployed via airdrop from a C-17 or C-130 aircraft. It can carry a crew of 10. On the surface, it can travel at 35 knots or 40 miles per hour via diesel engines and water jet propulsors. While submerged, it can travel at 6 knots or 7 miles per hour using lithium polymer batteries and silent electric motors. Submarine expert H.I. Sutton reports that the vessel functions like a wet sub and that the crew still wear diving gear and receive oxygen from a sizable onboard air system. This lets passengers exit underwater. The vessel can also be landed on a beach. U.S. fighter planes are getting an upgrade. The U.S. is finally taking a page from Star Wars and is now looking to equip its fighter planes with high-energy lasers. Lockheed Martin has been awarded a 26.2 million contract to design, develop, and build a high-energy laser weapon for the U.S. Air Force's SHIELD program. The company delivered a 60-kilowatt laser for U.S. Army ground vehicles early this year and will produce a smaller system to test on tactical aircraft by 2021. Airborne laser weapons can defend against threats from enemy missiles, boosting the self-defense capabilities of military jets. The Lockheed Martin laser is one of three subsystems that make up the SHIELD program. A beam control system is being developed by Northrop Grumman, while a pod to power and cool the laser is being designed by Boeing.